Greetings and welcome to all the regular members and visitors of my global home church. And remember that church is not some whitewashed mausoleum where you go to hear a preacher preach from a fake Bible or off of a um, iPad or off a cell phone and lead you down the highway to hell. It's where two or three are gathered together in Jesus' name, and then he will be also. <clears throat> this is my favorite, favorite, favorite time of the year. It's time for my annual sermon on Easter. And the saddest part is my favorite part. And it's also a sad day for me as well. It's a favorite day because so many Christians are so dumbed down. It just, it baffles me how spiritually and biblically ignorant that the majority of the church is. And I would estimate 97 to 99% fall into that sad category. And it's just so sad. It breaks my heart. <coughs> I talk to my wife about this all the time, about how even 10 years ago, I would have, if you, if you told me the church would be as apostate as it is right now, with so few Christians ready to fly, I would have said, you're crazy. But it's happening like lightning. The great apostasy of falling away is happening like crazy. What did God say in Genesis? Did God say that he created most days and they were good and rested on the seventh? Or did God say that he created the earth and the heavens and the earth in six days and on the seventh day rested? God said that every day was good. Every day belongs to God. That includes Easter. That includes Halloween. That includes Christmas. They all belong to God. Just because evil man tries to put a spin on stuff that God loves. And see, Satan's always been that way. Satan will try to put a spin on everything. Satan will try to take Easter, which is a day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We can never be saved without that. Christmas is my second favorite, where we celebrate his birth. But Satan loves to try to take away from God and take away from, from everything that's God and Jesus. On Saturday, a lot of Christians uh, wrongfully and errantly think that they're Jews. And they'll, they'll uh, pay for that one day as well. That's another story. But they worship the Sabbath on Saturday. And a lot of Satanists worship on Saturday. A lot of, a lot of uh, companies shoot pornography on Saturdays. Does that mean that Saturdays are bad days, that you can't worship the Lord? If you're a Jew, you should have a Sabbath on Saturday, but not Christians. Sunday. All kinds of Satanists worship on, on Sunday. All kinds of porn get shot on Sunday. All kinds of evil happens on Sunday. Does that mean we can't worship the Lord on Sunday? See, this is the mentality. You, I can't wrap my brain <coughs> around the spiritual and biblical ignorance of the majority of the church. They're clueless. No one knows for sure but God and Jesus themselves what day Jesus Christ was born and what day he was risen from the grave. No one knows for sure with them. But we celebrate as Christians on Easter. We don't celebrate the Easter bunny. We don't celebrate hopping around and finding eggs. We celebrate Jesus Christ dying on the cross, happened earlier, and then on Easter morning, praise the Lord, three days later, he rose from the grave, and he's in heaven. He's preparing a place for his true bride, which that number is gradually dwindling, sadly, to almost nothing. It breaks my heart, and it makes me sick. And every year I do an Easter sermon, I get hate mail from Christians galore. How dare you try to say a pagan holiday? You know, here's the bottom line. Here's some 411. I haven't done that one in a while. The so-called Christians who are who hate on Easter, what they're saying is they're saying that it's a it's a demon holiday. So they're saying that Jesus Christ's resurrection belongs to the devil. That's exactly what they're saying. They're saying it's a demon day. And woe, woe, woe unto them. And right now I rebuke every one of you. In Jesus' name, and command you to get behind me, Satan. You won't sit there and try to pull the wool over my eyes. I'm a watchman. I'm a pastor. I am I'm called to preach the truth, get the word out there. If you don't want to hear it, it's your business. But I'm going to keep preaching the truth until I'm either raptured or dead. I was going to start my tribulation and sermon series. And again, <laughs> Easter time snuck up on me. It's time for the Easter sermon. And next week, We'll see where the Lord leads me. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever sermon the Lord leads me. I try to stay in the Holy Spirit's will, in the center of his will, preaching what he wants me to preach. And that's what I do. So those who are waiting for the um, tribulation series, it'll come, Lord willing, when it's his time. We might be gone before then. But here's the bottom line what I'm trying to get at. The small number, shrinking number of true Christians, don't let the heathen out there steal your your love. Don't let them steal your, your joy. Don't let them steal your happiness for celebrating Jesus Christ's resurrection on this Sunday on Easter. Don't let them try to steal that because they're liars. 
They're liars and the truth is not in them. They're, they're like, like their father, Satan, a liar. Don't worry about that. You go on it right ahead and celebrate. If they tr don't like it, you rebuke them in Jesus' name and tell them, get behind me, Satan. They're going to hate it. They're going to be so pricked and, and convicted and twisted around. But you tell them, get behind me, Satan. I rebuke you in Jesus' precious name. Flee from me. They have to flee. I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of what so-called Christians are. It makes me sick. It makes me sick to my stomach to see. Like I did a, a sermon on last weekend, how the small number of Christians now, evangelicals, very few believe the truth. Very few evangelicals even believe in the Bible anymore, man. When Jesus Christ comes in a twinkling of an eye, blink your eyes. That's how fast it's going to be. It's going to be it. No time left at all. Most Christians will be left right here on earth to, to suffer, and about two-thirds of them will die the most awful, terrible, grotesque, horrific deaths imaginable to man. And it's going to be terrible. And there's going to be no do-overs and no timeouts. Those who live here in Obama land, formerly America, who is a great horror of Babylon, who have proven scripturally, America is also the city on seven hills. I've got I've got a viral video. Google it, Doc Kids on YouTube, Doc Kids, Great Horror of Babylon. It'll tell you all the scripture to show you. Those who are left behind, the backslidden Christians who are most of the church, guess what? You weren't ready for the rapture, so when you're left behind, and if God snatches Obama land, Snatches the life out of it. You die right then. Guess where your next breath is? It's not in heaven. You will wake up in hell in the lake of fire forever. This weekend, Sunday, Jesus Christ rose from the grave. Praise the Lord. He gave his life for us, man. He gave his life for us. How dare you try to take that away, that joy away from true Christians? And how dare you try to mock my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and tell him he's of the devil because of Easter. You're going to pay a serious, serious price, my friends, for that. Here's the bottom line. If Jesus Christ didn't come to earth on Christmas, nothing would have happened. We couldn't have done anything, but he had to pay the price. He had to pay the ultimate price on that tree on Calvary's cross. He suffered, man. He suffered the greatest indignation, the greatest pain, the most painful kind of death imaginable is the crucifixion, the way he was crucified. And what did he do? He asked Jesus Christ to forgive those who are killing him because they know not what they do. That's what he did. And he was able to make an exception for the thief on the cross because, guess what? Jesus Christ hadn't died yet. The, the plan of salvation wasn't didn't start until that instant when he died and rose again. He died there. And when he rose again, praise the Lord, salvation was available for everyone. But he gave that thief on the cross. It was an exception. He gave him an exception. You're going to be with me in heaven today because you believe. The bottom line is this. Few Christians are going to heaven. No non-Christians are going to heaven. And it breaks my heart because when I stand before Jesus Christ, I'm going to be able to look him in the eye, though I'm not worthy. <laughs> I'm nothing, man. I'm the smallest, lowliest thing in the world. I'm the least of all Christians. If you're watching this sermon and you're a true Christian, I'm the lowest of the lowest Christians. I'm a million times lower than you. But you know what? I'm a foot soldier for Jesus Christ. I fight the battle day and night. I walk the walk. I don't just talk it. I am a true, throwback, Bible-thumping, holy ruler, Jesus freak, a Christian man. Do I sin? Yes, I do. And when I do, I repent the way the Bible says in at least 250 scriptures that I have found to renew myself, bring myself back again anew to Jesus Christ. What did the Apostle Paul say? He said, you can be shipwrecked. You can be cast away. And I'm going to have much more on that, Lord willing, from that rapture of dead. I've got so much proof, man. I've blown one, saved one, always saved out of the water. But the lying Christians, the dumbed down, spiritually and biblically ignorant Christians, don't want to hear it. You know what? Because the devil's got their ear. They're going to, to, to hear. People say what their itching ears want to hear. They'll pay the price soon enough. Bottom line is this. If you've never been saved or backslidden, I've got a prayer. I've got six vital next steps in the box below the video. Pray that prayer. Do those steps as soon as possible. No one's guaranteed any more time. In fact, let's pray that prayer right now before your time runs out. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. Went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father and make a place for all your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus says that all who come to him and ask, not some, not most, but all, shall be saved. Those who fall away are backslidden. Don't give me this, 
Oh, you weren't sued to begin with. I don't even want to hear that. You j j jive talking, telling me lies. You might be selling. I'm not buying. I'm bringing out the oldies but goodies today. You haven't heard it in a while. Bottom line is this. Our job as followers of Christ, true followers of Christ, is to witness and pray for the lost night and day. If you're not doing it, start doing it now. If you are, great. And look up our redemption doth nigh. We fly soon. Share this Easter sermon, this sermon of hope, this sermon of joy, this sermon of love for what Jesus Christ did for us. If everybody possibly can, because I'm censored relentlessly all across social media, especially YouTube and Facebook. And those, again, the haters, rebuke them all in Jesus' name and tell them, get behind me, Satan. You guys have a blessed Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Bye.